All right, here we go. It's your coach, Pauly C. Austin, Texas. Today's master class is on for sale by owners. Now, look, I've made hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars prospecting, and for sale by owners are some of my most favorite people in the world to call. Now, when you're new to the business, you think, uh, you know, why would they possibly want to go with me when they're uh, going to save the commission? Well, the question really is, are they? Are they? With uh, National Association of Realtor um, Statistics, I, I haven't seen recently, but uh, I know for sure if you were to do your homework, a majority of for sale by owners that uh, end up do going for sale by owner uh, end up listing with a realtor. Last numbers I saw were hanging around 75%. So look, uh, people who list their home as for sale by owners, um, uh, a strong majority of them, whether it's 70% or 75% or even 65%, but I'll tell you, I've, I've been in business with real estate almost 20 years and consistently for those 20 years, I've seen a high percentage of those people for sale by owners uh, going to list with realtors. And the for sale by owners that do sell end up in an arm's length transaction. What's that mean? Well, they sell to somebody that they know. So if they're for sale by owner and uh, they haven't already, uh, and they've put their property up as a for sale by owner on for sale by owner rent, uh, for sale by owner.com or, or Zillow, uh, look, they've already probably exhausted uh, asking around their uh, cousins and aunts and uncles and family and friends. And so, the likelihood of them being able to sell, especially in this market, um, is is very unlikely. Now, look, sellers uh, for sale by owners were selling in the prior market, but I'll tell you, I listed more for sale by owners when the market was searing hot than in any other time in my almost 20 years in real estate. Why? Because I said, hey, Mr. Seller, if I could get you more than you could uh, listing on your own, even after the commissions, would you even uh, consider that? And of course, a reasonable and motivated person would say yes. And because I've uh, uh, created a conversation, and we're gonna go through the for sale by owner script here in this masterclass, a conversation that extracts uh, more information via uh, uh, via uh, sincere interest in trying to help sell the home, then uh, the rapport will easily flow and they'll have more, there'll be more trust in uh, answering that question to have real consideration. And when the market was so high, look, I could sell their property for 50, 100, 150, 200,000. I sold a property once in Austin, Texas for $325,000 over asking price. I sold a property for $225,000 over asking price and several other properties, well over $100,000 uh, asking price when the market was ridiculous. Now, we don't live in those times anymore. So now is a little bit different. It's uh, March 17th, 2023. And I'll probably d be dating myself at some point for those of you who are watching this masterclass on for sale by owners. But the point is, look, is that um, there's never a bad time to be able to help for sale by owners because they always need help. And they very rarely are able to sell uh, over and above what a uh, realtor could bring to the table who's uh, doing a great job and being able to, to bring value. So let's look at the fundamentals first in this masterclass with uh, the psychology of a for sale by owner. Because when you're playing this game and you understand who you are, somebody who, who brings value at a high level, and you understand who they are, somebody who's at a disadvantage because they don't have the uh, the uh, skills and the uh, strategies and the tools to be able to get the most amount of eyeballs as possible on the property. Uh, more eyes, more demand, more demand, higher price. Just That's just how it works, regardless of what industry that you're in. So let's take a look at for sale by owner strategy on the psychology so that when you enter those conversations, it's a lot more fun. They're a lot more cooperative and you can exercise all kinds of options to help them. Uh, w one example right now, just a, a quick side note, is uh, seller financing. So we, my team learned quite a bit around seller financing and how to provide options with seller financing when you can sell at market price. When uh, sellers are asking for a price that's maybe uh, a little bit above market value or maybe even outer space, seller financing provides options to be able to sell at or even above market price because traditional buyers uh, buyers who can't qualify traditionally for, for uh, financing a loan understand that they have to pay a premium 
on seller financing deals. So uh, that's a fantastic resource that we've made hundreds of thousands of dollars on now with seller financing to help people consider uh, our uh, services when we're talking about options and when we approach for sell by owners it's about understanding where they're at and understanding what options we may be able to provide so these conversations can be really fun let's jump in we're in the playbook page 59 in the playbook and this is uh the real sales talk playbook now this these is a compilation of uh, strategies uh scripts and we're gonna go over the for sale by owner script which is an amazing for sale by owner script and if you want the script uh, and the entire playbook over a hundred pages of strategies mindset and skills to get me uh, to sell well over 200 homes my first uh, four years in the business, then uh, I'll tell you, I'll send this to you for free. No obligations. Just email me the real sales talk at gmail.com. The real sales talk at gmail.com. I'll be happy to uh, send this to you. Okay. So remember for sell by owners want to sell first, we're going over the strategy here and the mindset. So keep in mind using the script to keep them engaged and talking about their situation will extract their true motivation. So talking about their situation will extract their true motivation. Because when I talk about situation at there, people are a lot more likely to, uh, share their motivation. Same thing with expireds and, um, and withdrawns. People try to go directly into motivation and because there's no rapport, there's no trust. And then people are uh, not are less likely to share what's really going on with their motivation and, and their intent to sell. So, um, asking great questions, uh, and your intention to find uh, if there's a buyer possible, you're asking all these questions to find out, um, uh, that, um, you would like to bring a buyer. So when you're asking questions around the situation, which ultimately lead to motivational questions, then um, you're expressing interest in uh, what's going on with their true intention to sell. And ultimately you're finding out a little bit more about how you can bring them a buyer. So when you'll see this in the, in the for sale by owner script, the first several questions are really finding out about what's going on because I really do want to bring a buyer. And Hey, if I could bring a buyer and it's off market, we've done that before, less likely. And, uh, if I can understand uh, uh, what's happening with the situation and their intent to sell as a for sale by owner, that gives me a better understanding on on uh, how we may be able to bring them a buyer uh, on the open market listing the property. So look, don't get caught in the mindset that you have to preview first and uh, or they're not going to list uh, right away. So that assumption that maybe they're not, uh, they're not gonna do anything right now or maybe I should just go do a drive-by. Now look, uh, should you go do a drive-by on a for sale by owner? Yes, you should. Um, should you go do a drive-by on for every for sale by owner? No, you shouldn't. In my opinion, I think that'd be a waste of time and having a good conversation first around their situation and motivation will give you a better understanding on whether you should do the drive-by or not. Because look, some for sale by owners are in outer space and they'll always be in outer space. And do you really want to drive those people? Look, your job is to talk to motivated people, people who are cooperating in the conversation, people who may have some consideration. So just going by and driving all around town talking to anybody is a waste of time in my opinion. So I want to find out a little bit more about their situation or motivation. So look, it's true for sell by owners can take longer to track and sign than an expired or withdrawn listing. But if you're talking to a for sale by owner who's truly motivated and sensible, there's some logic in their thinking, they'll consider your services uh, sooner than later. So uh, look, it may take several weeks because expired withdrawns, you kind of want to get on it. And yes, we prospect expires and withdrawns to three years down the road, but uh, with expireds, uh, most of them, uh, many of them relist within the first 30 days. It's a, it's a really high number, like around half. So with for sale by owners, they're not going to typically list their property for sale by owner and then list within the first week. It happens. I've been on several appointments where people went for sale by owner and they kind of did want to talk to an agent to or agents to uh, get an idea who they may consider. And, and, and so there were for sale by owners using that as a process to actually vet agents and, and begin interviewing them for the process or who would uh, just come to their senses and go, wait a minute, why don't I just list the property have had that happen several times. So don't, just assume, and you know what happens when you assume that just because they're a for sale by owner, you have to groom them along for three, four weeks, um, and that they're and that um, and that they're not going to do anything. Again, you want to root that conversation in good questions around situation, situation and motivation to vet that out.
Okay, so expressing you're interested in helping, uh, plus by expressing you're interested in helping and considering how you might have more features and benefits to your service that makes more sense than going for sale by owner, you're future pacing them to sit down and talk uh, and talk about it reasonably. Okay, we talk about previews being fine. Uh, for sale by owners are a great source uh, to get experience talking with motivated prospects. Man, if we could just look at people and see who was interested in selling their home because I want to list more properties because I can list a lot more properties than I can working with buyers. And so you want to identify qualified sellers or people who are expressing intent to sell for sell by owners are just that they are people who are saying, I'd like to sell my home. This is fantastic practice as you have authentic interest in helping them to find out what's going and to maneuver through conversations strategically to get consideration. Okay, so um, this is all gonna be contingent upon your ability to speak fluent real estate. If you think you're just gonna go into the conversation and be nice, let me tell you something. Talk to a, a few people who haven't role played or haven't practiced their for sale by owner scripts and they're not fluent and they're not fluid in their conversations talking to for sale by owners and how they got chopped up in the conversation and it's over and they go nah, for sale by owners they're all greedy none of them want to list with an agent and yet here we are making hundreds of thousands of dollars off of working for sale by owners okay most for sale by owners list their property with an agent the question is can you clearly identify which ones are motivated and will develop the communication skills to be uh, the right agent at the right time that is all going to be rooted in your ability to have have better conversations. Do you want to attract better prospects? Say yes. Do you want to attract more highly qualified people to do business with? Say yes. If you want to attract more of those people, you're going to have to be more attractive in your conversation to not just be salesy and closing on them five times. You're going to have to have enough skill and panage to maneuver through the conversation and extract that information around the situation and move into that motivational questions so that you know I should follow up, so that you know I should set an appointment or the, so you know I should trash that lead and move on. But look, that takes intention around your communication skills and for sell by owners are raising their hands saying, hey, I want to sell. Get with it, people. Get with it, people. You said you want to help people. And these people are standing right up saying they want to do business. Get serious about your conversations because this is a fantastic opportunity for you to get more listings now. Okay, let's jump into the for sale by owner script. Okay, so for sale by owner script. I love this script. Okay, I took a compilation of uh, uh, a few OG coaches who had great scripts and over the course of really 10 plus years, I fine tune these scripts in regards to what causes conversations to be a little bit more uh, practical, uh, comfortable, natural. That's what you have in front of you right now. Not a, a, a hypothetical piece of paper. Somebody put some notes on and said, this is a good strategy here. These are battle tested conversations in the playbook for you to be able to uh, not have to guess what will work. And uh, as you see, if you, if you request a copy of the playbook, many of the scripts are set up with the same structure. First extract situation because it's more conversational. It's, it builds more rapport and then move into motivation and then see what you can do to close. Okay, so let's jump into the for sale by owner script on uh, within the playbook. And so it's ring, ring, hello, hi, I'm calling about the property for sale. Is it still available? Yes, it is. Great, my name's Polly. I'm with the Vision Realty Group. I'm wondering if you're cooperating a commission, dot, 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 pause, just a breath, for agents who bring qualified buyers. Okay. Now, you'll see a lot of bold italicized words. That's for, I call them sound slaps, for you to be able to uh, inflict a little bit more energy or emphasis and a, a lot of dot, dot, dots to slow it down. You need to slow down. You're talking too fast. They're not really absorbing because ring, ring, hello, and then all of a sudden a stranger's calling them and talking to them and they're trying to process what's happening. Oh, no, another realtor. 
Hey, slow it down because, hey, oh, by the way, very rarely will somebody say, no, I'm not cooperating in commission. And even if you say, hey, Paul, what do I say when they say they're not cooperating with a commission? You repeat and approve and move on. No, I'm not cooperating with a commission. Uh, that's okay. I appreciate that. I'm sorry. My name again is Paul. What's your name? And they say, my name's Sherry. Hey, Sherry, I appreciate that. It's important for me to know about off-market opportunities. So I have you at least on a list on, on a, uh, of available properties. You're not on the multiple listing service as a listing right now, are you? You see that dot, dot, dot. Now that's if they said they were uh, uh, not cooperating with a commission, but look, that's the same delivery. Even if they say that they're cooperating with a commission, which 99% of the time, if you say, Hey, if I have a qualified buyer, would you cooperate a commission to me? to bring you that qualified buyer and execute uh, uh, execute the deal at a price point that you were comfortable and happy with, 99% of the time, they are going to say yes. So that's a great question for you to get agreement for right up front. Now, they just happen to say, hey, no, the property sold. Then, uh, uh, by the way, there's a wrong number script in the playbook that we actually get business with when people say, hey, no wrong number. And instead of just jumping right into, well, hey, uh, any thoughts on buying or selling real estate? Blah. Questions that create rapport and then moving to the close question. Okay. So, hey, hey, okay. Thank you. I appreciate uh, helping update my records. I can take you off our list. Hey, since I had you on the line already, what other plans did you have to buy or sell real estate this year? And then maybe move into the motivation script, which by the way, uh, 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 I don't know anybody who's got a motivation script. Okay. So uh, when they say no, the property sold, you really may want to ask just a couple questions. Oh, wow. When did it sell? How did you find the buyer? Very non-threatening. How much did you sell it for? Eh, kind of aggressive. Oh, when did it sell? How did you happen to find the buyer? Uh, were you able to sell it for a good price? Okay, great. Some rapport building questions that find out about the situation. There it is again. Hey, okay, thank you. I appreciate you help, help, help me update my records. I can definitely take you off my, off my list. And since I had you on the line already, what other plans did you have to buy or sell real estate this year. Some of them still have to buy a home. Some of them have other investment properties. Plenty, plenty of investors going for sale by owner. Don't discount the fact that just because somebody said, said they sell, they sold their home or they already moved, that you shouldn't be asking more questions around that situation. Oh, when did that happen? Um, how did how did it happen? How did you feel about the process? Did you guys stay here in town or did you move out of state? Good question. Actually, on our cheat sheets, I'm going to include that in next year's playbook. We have cheat sheets for uh, investors, properties being sold. Uh, a couple of cheat sheets I'll add to next year's playbook. Okay, so 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 some rapport questions, and then moving into, hey, maybe I can help you do something else. What are your thoughts? Uh, what plans did you have? Open ended questions. Uh, no, I sold the property already. Hey, dude, look, this is high level stuff, man. Nobody's having conversations around this on how to have high level for sale by owner uh, conversations to this extent. That's why it's called real sales talk because nobody's doing this. Nobody's doing this, breaking it down the way that you need to, to have high level conversations. Okay. So they go, uh, yeah, no problem. If you bring a qualified buyer, I'll, I'll cooperate. And then back into the script. Hey, I'm so sorry. Uh, my name again is Pauly. W what was your name? Now, you may have their name there. A lot of the for sale by owner data actually doesn't have their name there. I'm so sorry. Disarms them. Hey, I'm coming just to uh, understand. And hey, by the way, I'm a person. And I was wondering who you are, person. And so this is personalizing it a little bit, making it a little bit more casual. And they say, oh, my name is uh, Brett. Oh, Brett. It's important for me to know about off-market uh, opportunities. So we have you on a list of available properties. You're not on the multiple listing service as a listing right now, are you? Because some of these for sale by owners are on the multiple listing service. And even if they're with a flat fee service company, there's nothing I can do. I'm backing off. Many of them, many, many, many of them are not. But I want to get that up front. I've been in conversations and I didn't ask that question. I get all the way to the conversation towards the end. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, I'm on the multiple listing service. Okay, get that question up front. Uh, no, I'm not on the multiple listing service. Okay, so is 550,000 still your asking price? Many times they correct me. Uh, 
when they're new, that's when mostly calling uh, maybe seasoned or older for sale by owners. And they'll correct me and I go, hey, so uh, how did you end up having to come to that price? Well, we looked around, we had some information, somebody gave us some information and great. So you're doing your homework. That's fantastic. I'm always trail repeating and approving. I'm, I'm re-summarizing what they said, or I'm, I'm encouraging through acknowledgement or approval what they said. Very important to develop rapport. We talk a lot about that in, with repeat, repeat, approve, move process in the playbook at a high level for you to learn. So uh, to, uh, uh, is there any room for negotiating that price with a qualified buyer? Now, I want to make sure that they know that not just any Tom, Dick, or Harry, a qualified buyer, and they say maybe within reason, within reason, great, I'm glad that you're considering uh, your options and, and you sounds like you really want to sell the property to show the property, dot, dot, dot. You still live there? Is it rented or vacant? And then they'll go into how to show the property. Now, look, we've we, in this uh, little section of the script, we've only asked questions around the situation to understand what's going on. Sounds like we uh, these are questions with intent to bring a buyer, which they are, and to understand a little bit more what's happening so I can develop a little bit more rapport and to lead into the motivation, which is, man, uh, what would be the biggest benefit if you did sell this property? And, and you can see in parentheses there, dig to find a benefit. Okay, dig, 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 dig on what's really going on here because motivation's the mother. It births everything. If you don't have motivation, you don't have anything. And for sale by owners tend to be a little bit more standoffish on their motivation. So you might have to dig in a little bit uh, more there or come to the drive-by or appointment with trying to figure out what's really going on with uh, with the uh, with the motivation. But look, I want to find out, you know, what's the biggest benefit if you did sell? I like this one, and I know it's somewhere in the scripts, is uh, what a great area this is. Uh, why would you want to sell the property anyways? Many times. They easily flow into that because there's some appreciation with with respecting the area or neighborhood, even if it's an area that you wouldn't live in or a home that you wouldn't live in. They bought the property initially, and if they really hate the neighborhood, they'll tell you, and that's even better that they say, oh, I hate this neighborhood and the crime and the neighbors and blah, blah, blah. Fantastic. I'm learning a little bit more about their real intent and motivation. And so they say, well, you know, I really want to be, I really want to move to Florida. And you go, wow, Florida, that's a lot different than Texas. What would be important about moving to Florida? Well, you know, my mom lives in Florida and she's getting a little bit older and, you know, I, I really need to be closer to family at this stage in my life. So you see in parentheses there on number three, you're leading in from what you asked in regards to what was important. Wow, so you're being closer to your mom and uh, and family. That's uh, that's really important, especially if you know that there's uh, there's a need there. And it sounds like that uh, you have a lot of uh, concern and care for your mom. So I definitely respect uh, making that move and making that decision. That certainly isn't an easy one to make sure that you're going there and, and, and being there for family. So So ultimately, what's that end up doing for you? Now, careful, because what's important about that and certainly what would that do for you? Some of, For some of you high Ds or high Cs, you might be going, eh, you're getting a little personal or eh, that sounds a little weird. And for you high Is, that doesn't sound weird at all. I'm talking about the disc personality profiles, right? You don't know it, Google it. And for you high eyes, you're like, yes, for sure. I mean, so what is important about that? What does that do for you? And the high Ds and Cs are going, yeah, that's a little feelsy for me. But I'll tell you, even if they're D or C and you phrase it just in the way that I phrased it for you, where you're really intensely curious about what's going on, you really want to know, they'll answer and they'll give you good answers because you really do want to know. And you really can't help them unless they really are motivated. And this really isn't manipulation. It's it's really discovery to find out who can you really help and what's going on. Because you're trying to lower this, I'm a salesperson, I'm a stranger, to we're two human beings and I'd like to help you. What's going on? So what would that do for you? Well, you know, like I told you, I want to be closer to my mom. And, and uh, you know, she's only got a couple more years left. And um, we didn't really have a great relationship. So, you know, I really want to be here, there for her this time around. Wow. 
what a change of events. And now what would that do for you going deeper into motivation and uh, touching the emotional point for what's happening with uh, with their motivation. And now you're really finding out uh, the heart of the emotion on uh, motivation. Now, look, this will happen when you ask that second question or you ask, what would that do for you? And then you go, well, what's important about that? And then you ask uh, the third question. So what would it be important about that? What would that do for you? And then what would be important about that? And what would that do for you? And then all of a sudden, like, you know it when you're at that warm, gushy point, or you know that you've touched an emotional nerve where they're really telling you what's up happens less often on the call happens many times at the appointment but you got to be prepping that at least to get to that point on like what's going on what's really happening here okay question number four so in a perfect world uh when would you like to sell well i'd like to sell yesterday well i know within the next 30 days well you know i don't have to do anything till uh 90 days from now okay well (laughs) But if you had a really good offer right now, would you still consider it? Well, no. I mean, really, 60 and 290 days. You'd be surprised the answers that you get in regards to, in a perfect world, when would you like to sell? All right, so why do you decide to sell yourself rather than hire a professional embedded command to get the highest price possible. I'd really, uh, you know, Patrick Ferry, I love that when I was around the Mike Ferry organization in Las Vegas, when I used to live in Las Vegas, he helped me coin that term where he used that a lot. And I I loved it because it just flowed. And a lot of what we speak is in flow. And when you can flow and it feels good, then it's obviously much better received. And so highest price possible. I just love that little term there to be able to flow that on. Uh, to, you want to get the highest price possible as a seller always and, and every time. And so, I've, you know, most of the time, 99% of the time, because they're for sale by owner, it's because they want the most money possible. You know the answer to that. And because it's a hook question, a question that hooks them in a little bit closer. And so, um, uh, you know the answer to that. It's about the money. And so, um, now it's time to close, right? Or maybe it's not time to close because you know that they're going to, uh, wait a few weeks and you got to respect that and you get that energy you hear that you know that and so with the for sale by owner you got to be a little careful on should i move forward do i do a drive-by do i follow up if at this point you feel like there's quite a bit of motivation then maybe you should do a drive-by and uh maybe you come prepared to do that appointment uh maybe you want to get aggressive and just shoot for the appointment look you're gonna have to figure that out because not all for sale by owners are created the same in my opinion and you're gonna have to have a good conversation like you're having right here to figure out uh, what move you're going to make next. So for sale by owner close, what's more important, selling on your own or selling for the highest price possible? Another hook question. We've helped for sale by owners just like you make more money even after commission. So let me ask you, Brett, we both know it's all about visibility to get more buyers. More buyers means a higher price. That makes sense, right? Well, yeah, but I still don't want to list my home right now. And and look, I understand that, Brett, that you're not going to list your property right now. The biggest advantage for us really to meet is is to see if one of the three uh, one of the uh, three types of buyers that we're working with because we could consider buying it. We work with investors, and there are buyers looking around on the market uh, might be a fit. So so we'll also share how to get the highest price possible, even if you don't hire us. No commitments. We're just going to have a conversation, share with you what we can do, learn a little bit more about the property, and then we'll be on our way. We could stop by Tuesday at 4 or Wednesday at 6. What works better for you? And there's the assumptive close. So um, there's a little bit more here on a a power for sale by owner close and a uh, drive-by. I love that one. And let me cover that one uh, really quick down here at the bottom. I apologize. Schedule a drive-by. You know, if you've deemed there's quite a bit of motivation and you didn't get the, uh, you didn't get the appointment then, uh, and you want to get there or maybe it wasn't time for the appointment, but you still want to do a drive by. Hey, look, Brett, I appreciate, uh, you want to give it a try on your own. I respect that. Hey, look, I would feel the same way if I were you. So let's do this. Uh, I play let's make a deal every week with off market buyers. So I have several different groups of buyers right now. I can stop by and take a look five, 10 minutes and, and look the best way for me to know, uh, to bring you a buyer is to know the situation is is not going to waste your time. So I'll be in and out to see if we can make a match with one of the buyers. No pitching, no selling. What times work uh, best for you just for me to pop in? I'm available Tuesday at 4 or Wednesday at 6. 
look, I do want to see the property and I do want to get a better idea. And we may have buyers and you should be talking to buyers and you should be going to networking events and team meetings, uh, sales meetings at your office or uh, virtual meetings with your, with your broker to uh, be connected to as many people as possible. So look, don't say if you don't feel comfortable with it, but we are working with a lot of buyers. We are on a daily basis looking for buyers. So uh, we can confidently and comfortably say this. Look, for sale by owners are a fantastic opportunity for you to be able to have real-time conversations with real sellers who may be really motivated and for you to make thousands of dollars, maybe hundreds of th thousands of dollars like we have with sellers who at the end of the day, after you've called them and after you've demonstrated clear value and your, your, um, your actions have spoke louder than your words and your consistency and your follow-up and your professionalism that they're grateful for you when the deal closes and they're writing a fantastic review going, thank you. And they're completely open and happy to uh, provide a referral to you because you are awesome. You are valuable and you come from contribution for sale by owner masterclass. Hey, my name is Paulie C. Uh, uh, owner of the Vision Realty Group, Keller Williams in Austin, Texas. And look, um, uh, we'd be happy to serve any of your clients in the greater Austin, Texas area. If you want more information, I gave you that email, therealsalestalk at gmail.com. Share, uh, follow, whatever platform that you're on as we continue to bring great content for you to be a powerful communicator and serve more people.